policy that, have, that the U.S. has stayed outside of is trying to do that, the Kyoto Protocol. When you talk about justice, however, on the climate change issue, and this is my conclusion, uh, it's, a, it's a tricky concept. If a religious scholar, maybe not, but for anybody in practical society or a politician, it is. There's justice uh, uh, for nature. And they're really, they're, even the uh, law has standing for nature in some of the, uh, the environmental law. How can we destroy this earth that we live on? That's a form of justice. There's justice across generations and across historical time. The Chinese are arguing that they should not be forced to cut, and the Indians, that they should not be forced to cut their greenhouse gas emissions because the developed nation didn't have to in the late 19th century when we grew. We burned coal without anybody looking. The, the problem that is in conflict with some of the other uh, ways to define justice, the scale of Chinese and Indian coal use dwarfs anything in history. The Chinese are, burn, are creating a, a British uh, electric system burning coal every year right now. Uh, the, the existing British, the old industrial power. So coal is a serious dilemma, and the idea that of that kind of justice what was good for the developed nations is good for developing, has, has all kind of injustice to the environment built in. And finally, there is a justice of cross-generation. I think of the man who introduced the, the guy who's talking about the journey from East Texas to a son who's going around the world. My life journey's like that. My dad, a uh, seventh grade dropout, came down to the refineries in the Gulf Coast to make a living to raise kids who could go to college. If we abruptly undermine the infrastructure of fossil fuel in this country, we are, we are asking the poorest people who work in those industries to pay the cost, and unless there's some kind of po political justice in the design of the bill, that's a pretty high cost to pay, and in politics it's a cost this nation at least won't pay. We've shown that again. We'll choose jobs over energy security or over the environment if, 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 if our reality put, puts that as the choice before us. So justice is a, is a funny issue here, and I'm very interested in these two papers, and I'm going to sit down, I, not as quickly as I thought I would. But the motion, even in our city, particularly in our city, to these to these other forms of energy is is incredibly interesting to watch as a as a person who uses energy and cares about the environment. Uh, it, it must be exciting to be in this business today, as opposed to be a professor watching it. So I'll sit down with that. <laughs> Professor is my new best friend, I think. <laughs> I agree with, with uh, many of the uh, comments that he made today. And, uh, I want to thank uh, the uh, Raindrop House for having us here today and, and having this uh, dialogue. It's uh, very needed, uh, something that, uh, especially with, with energy, that, that uh, folks should <coughs> become very educated about because it's, uh, it affects your life uh, every day. So a little bit about myself, I I'm, uh, I'm uh, do not have an energy background. My background is in management. I'm a graduate of American University uh, with an MBA in management and uh, in investments. So we invest in uh, many different areas. Energy is one, uh, also healthcare, uh, banking, finance, that type of thing. Uh, the we're, I'm here to talk about the practical applications, the business opportunities. That there are many threats to this emerging uh, industry. Uh, the practical applications that, that uh, we're looking at is uh, specifically on biofuels uh, in the areas of uh, uh, Africa uh, with uh, Benin. We're, we're looking at Benin. Uh, we also have operations in Mozambique and in uh, Kenya currently. And what we're, we're doing is uh, focusing on Jatropha, which is a much longer uh, uh, plant to grow. Of course, these are bioprops, so th it is a plant. Uh, and also castor bean. And we're also working with, some, uh, with the Israeli government uh, with some hybrid technologies of, of these two plants. The uh, lifespan of a Jatropha tree is about 40 years. Uh, it takes about eight years before you can, uh, you know, harvest the, uh, the fruit from it to crush it to make uh, uh, oil that can be turned into uh, diesel. Castor bean is a, is a much shorter uh, growing period. It's about uh, three to four months. Uh, A&M is also working on that. I think uh, U of H is, is doing uh, a lot of new research in, in those areas. Um, 
the purpose of, of the research, of course, is to increase the yield. Uh, when you're taking uh, acres or hectares, uh, you need to, to be profitable, you must be able to uh, increase the yield on that hectare, acre, whatever the, the, uh, the land mass may be, and also with less water. Uh, even look at technology to make it uh, water that's not potable. So you're able to take sludge and, and those types of things. So you, the focus is to not take away fertile land or water or uh, any type of area that would be beneficial to grow food crops. The alternatives is to get away from, uh, uh, you know, of course, natural gas and, and oil, but also from corn and soy and palm and things that can be uh, eaten because if you look at the, um, uh, well, if the choices are to be made, uh, you're going to choose food over fuel every day. Any government will. Uh, the sustainability in this uh, area is the biggest enemy. We, alternative energies in any form cannot compete with oil and natural gas today. Everything that we have depends on oil and bringing it here. All of our lives, all of uh, anything that you use depends on oil. There's not enough, um, there is not enough uh, biofuel in the world to even supply one major U.S. city today. I don't think that we'll ever have that in our lifetime. But our purpose is to make a dent. We're not here to solve problems from a business aspect. We, there's, there's, it's almost impossible in our lifetime to be able to solve that. So that being said, we must work with the oil companies. Uh, many alternative energy companies, particularly in the biofuel industry, uh, made a crucial mistake of trying to take on the, the uh, oil companies. Uh, and again, with the sustainability factor, there's, there's no way that you could, uh, you could be able to beat that out. So blending, I think, is a, is a solution to be able to take a, a, you know, a barrel of oil and, to, and say we're going to blend 10% of this barrel of oil with biofuel uh, to make it cleaner, more efficient, and that, that would be the basis that, that we need to create a long-term uh, effect and, and, quite frankly, a solution for in the next 100 years. Uh, I also share the, uh, the professor's uh, thoughts on government. Uh, and uh, the political intervention that uh, uh, is not conducive to this type of environment growing. Um, I believe that the, the energy policy that we are lacking in the United States uh, is, should not be uh, coinciding <coughs> with two and four year elections. That's the biggest challenge that the government faces, I think, in the, in the, in the world. If we're, we're looking at that, the professor said that it's, it's jobs or fuel or alternative, it's always going to be jobs. Those are what uh, folks are most important to them. What they're going to vote for is, <coughs> I don't have a job, I lost it because of whatever reason. Well, they're, they're going to, biofuels and alternative energies are going to uh, uh, take, a, uh, take a back seat to that. Billions of dollars was allocated in the stimulus <coughs> package very little has been distributed. Uh, that is a failure of the United States government. And I have no qualms with telling uh, Secretary Chu or the President, I sit on the President's National Advisory Board. Uh, he knows that I'm not a yes man. And I think that's why he smiles every time he sees me. Uh, <laughs> because here comes that guy again. But um, the government must do more to get, these, uh, get this money out. It's not going to be effective unless the money is out. The technology is, uh, the research and development is going on. Uh, jobs are created. Actually, I read in the Wall Street Journal very recently that 40,000 jobs and alternative energy have been lost around the world. So that, that again, bolsters what I consider a, a failure. The professor also alluded that the, the energy bill will be the next fight, and he is correct. Uh, whenever we're finished with whatever form we're going to get health care, energy will be the next big fight. Um, we'll see how that turns out. Opportunities, um, and I'll, I'll be brief, uh, opportunities um, uh, are that many biofuels in the world, around the world, the growers and the refiners have all failed. 
uh, a significant number, not all of them, but a significant number have failed. Uh, West LV Bank, which is uh, out of Germany, has lost billions of dollars uh, investing or providing loans to refiners and to growers to start biofuels uh, in whatever form that they, they may take. They cannot sustain because of the fluctuating market and also there, if you look at the, as a refinery as an example, a refinery is sitting by itself, it must have the feedstock to refine. If it doesn't have the feedstock to refine, they close, they close their doors. And on the other side, they must have the, the market to sell it to. So with the fluctuating market with oil and gas, there, there's no sustainability there to survive. Uh, as an example, here in Houston, in the chip channel, the, um, the uh, Green Hunter Energy uh, is a biodiesel refinery that has spent over $100 million developing that particular facility, uh, state of the art. Unfortunately, less than two years they've collapsed. They were unable to secure their feedstock and, and it uh, collapsed. The opportunity is, you know, all that gluten, what's the opportunity? Well, new emerging third and fourth generation uh, entries into the market will be able to acquire those facilities uh, at pennies on the dollar. Hopefully they'll be able to learn from those mistakes. Um, uh, oh, there's just one last point I want to make uh, with those third third and fourth generation uh, uh, companies, entries into the market. They, they'll, of course, be in a great position to be able to uh, acquire these properties at, at huge distances. But on the other hand, the capital to raise to, uh, to acquire them and to uh, run them is, is gone. Uh, that's why it's so important that the, the Congress and the President gets the uh, stimulus package money out so new technology can be available and new uh, entries into the market can uh, thrive. So, thank you. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.